welcome to EC Electronics. This is a part two of LPSC technical assistant solutions of electronics. Okay, so if you have not watched part one, uh, I request you to watch part one of this video uh, in which we have discussed a lot of questions from the LPSC technical assistant question paper discussion. And this is a part two. Okay, so let us see what is the first question. A 100 megahertz carrier having amplitude of 6 volt is amplitude modulated by by a 5 kilohertz audio signal having an amplitude of 3 volt what is the modulation index so here we are going to perform amplitude modulation or air and what is the modulation index in case of a air so here the modulation index m is equal to the amplitude of modulating signal by amplitude of carrier so the amplitude of modulating signal is the audio signal is having amplitude 3 volt means amplitude of modulating signal is 3 volt 3 volt by amplitude of carrier is 6 volt so it is 3 by 6 that is 1 by 2 which is equal to 0 0.5 is the modulation index of this am wave okay so the correct answer here is option b which is 0 0.5 is a modulation index speed of sound waves in air is dash so we need to uh, write the speed of sound waves in air a approximately 340 uh, 345 meter per second b uh, 3 meter per second c 3 to 10 raised to 8 meter per second d 8 meter 80 meter per second the correct answer is approximately 345 meter per second is the speed of sound waves in air a, sound waves or audio waves in Air, okay so the speed of audio waves or sound waves is approximately 345 meter per second correct answer is option a next question a varistor is dash a variable capacitor b voltage dependent resistor c current dependent resistor d none of this correct answer is varistor means it is a voltage dependent resistor correct answer is option b Okay, so while uh, going through the question paper, I could understand that these technical assistant question paper or examination is asking a lot of theory questions and which is testing your knowledge in core subjects. Okay, you should be knowing the core concepts. Next question, the knee voltage of germanium diode is approximately dash. The knee voltage for germanium diode is approximately 0 0.3 and for silicon diode is approximately 0 0.7 we, we have discussed in a lot of previous videos about this thing for a uh, germanium diode to start conducting the voltage required is 0 0.3 volt it is a knee voltage and for a silicon diode it is 0 0.7 volt okay so here they are asking the knee voltage of germanium diode this 0 0.3 volt is the correct answer which is option A. Noise factor is defined as dash. A. Ratio of signal power to noise power at the same point. B. Ratio of signal to noise power of input to signal to noise power of output. B. Ratio of noise to signal power. Uh, C. D. None of this. Okay. So the noise factor of devices is de generally denoted by F and it is given by S by N input to S by N output. Okay, so this is the noise factor or F. Noise factor is defined as F is equal to S by N input by S by N output. That is signal to noise power of, that is a ratio of signal to noise power of input signal to noise power of output correct answer here is option b is the correct answer which is ratio of signal to noise power of input to signal to noise power of output next question let me remove this question first okay this much shall remove next question while sampling a continuous signal f of x fx uh, which of the following should be met to avoid aliasing a fs greater than or equal to 2 fx b fs less than or equal to 2 fx c fs minus fx d fs greater than or equal to 1 by 2 fx so here in order to answer this question we have to assume that 
f of x is the frequency of your signal, input signal. And f of s is the sampling rate. Only by keeping this thing in mind, if you look at look into the question, you should be able to answer. Okay, so in order to sample a signal with frequency f of x, say input frequency, okay. So f of x is the input frequency then. In order to avoid aliasing, we have to go for Nyquist sampling and the Nyquist sampling rate f of s is given by f of s should be greater than or equal to 2 fx is the condition which is twice the maximum frequency. So only if this Nyquist criterion is satisfied, aliasing is prevented. Okay, so then the condition uh, has to be f of s greater than or equal to 2 fx. Okay, so if you know the Nyquist theorem, this is very easy. I have seen a lot of questions, either they are they are asking the theory or they will be giving some numbers and they will be asking which frequency has to be set as the sampling rate. Then you have to go for twice the maximum frequency. Okay. Anyway, here the correct answer is option A is the correct answer. Next question. Okay, let me remove this question first. So, the next question is, for transistor operation, A, collector is more doped than emitter side. No, generally the emitter side is the most heavily doped. Next option, base region is narrow, it is correct. Then option C, collector base junction is forward bias. If the transistor is operating in active region, you have to go for the emitter base junction forward bias and collector base junction reverse bias. This is a normal case for an active region. But if it is a saturation region, then the collector base junction can be also forward bias. Okay, this can be right, this can be not right. Anyway, last option is base is heavily doped. No, base is not heavily doped. Base is very, very lightly doped in all the cases. So, this is also wrong. This is also wrong. So, out of the two options, option C we cannot really reject. But, but if you are considering the active region of operation, then it is wrong. So, since it is not specifically given that in which region in the transistor is operating, we can assume it as an active region of operation and then the correct answer is base region is narrow. But if it is given specifically that, that the transistor is operating in tra saturation region means you have to pick option C. That is, we cannot say that option C is also wrong. Since the transistor has various modes of operation and in saturation mode of operation, collector based tension is also forward bias. Okay, so we cannot really neglect this answer. But for the time being, we can assume that since it is not specifically given the transistor is working in saturation or active, we can assume it as active mode of operation. Then the correct answer is option B because base region is narrow. And in all the cases and in all the modes of operation, base is the most narrow region. And basis that and that that is this option is always correct. Option B is always correct. Okay, so we are going for option B here. Correct answer is base region is narrow, which is option B. An analog voltage of minus 5 volt to plus 5 volt is digitized with an A with an 8-bit ADC. What is the ADC resolution or step size? Okay, so we need to find the resolution or step size here. And the equation for finding the resolution or step size is V full scale, that is full scale voltage by 2 raised to N, where V full scale uh, is the full scale voltage and N is the number of bits of ADC. Okay, here the voltage is varying from minus 5 to plus 5. So, V full scale is 5 minus minus 5, that is 5 plus 5 is the full scale voltage and 2 raised to N is 8. N is the number of bits of the ADC, right? So, it is 10 by 2 raised to 8 is the ADC resolution and the answer coming here is 39.0625 millivolt is the ADC resolution. Correct answer is option C. Next question. Let me remove this. Okay. Next question. SCR that is silicon controlled rectifier is made of dash. A. Single PN junction. B. 2 PN junction. C. 3 PN junctions. D. 4 PN junctions. So, if you see the 
structure of a silicon control rectifier it is p n p n like this okay so it is uh like this and there are how many p injection there is one p injection j1 here there is another p injection j2 there is another p injection j3 so totally how many p injections are there there are three p injections in a silicon control rectifier and the correct answer is option c which is three p injections okay this is anode this is cathode okay so this is the uh, silicon control rectifier it is made of one two three p injections so you should be able to answer this silicon control rectifier structure if they are asking then it is this okay and also it is uh, symbolically it is represented like this anode cathode and gate okay so it is a symbolic representation next question four conditional flags of 8051 are dash so they are asking for the flags of 8051 a c y a c p o v so you should be knowing this c y is carry a c is auxiliary carry p is parity and o v is overflow okay so likewise the options are option b c y z s o v c c y z p o v d c y a c p z so z is not actually a flag in 8051 so you cannot take option c and d and also b correct answer is carry c y auxiliary carry ac parity p and overflow o out of these options these four represent the conditional flags and the correct answer here is option a which is cy ac p and ob next question is also theory question so if you see the questions have been asked from 8086 and 8051 microcontroller Next question is from 8051. What is the data best width of 8051 microcontroller? So you should be knowing this without even looking into the option. It is 8-bit data best. Okay. Correct answer is option A which is 8-bit data best. These are theory questions. Okay. So uh, 8051 has a 8-bit data best. In 8086, if you want to access 16-bit accumulator, then use dash. So, uh, for a 8086 microprocessor, uh, if you want to access the accumulator, then AX is representing the accumulator with 16 bits and you can access or you can divide it again as two uh, 8 bits, one representing a pair of, that is AH, the higher, uh, uh, LS, higher values, higher 8 bits and the lower 8 bits is AL. Okay, so 16 bit means it is ax this is 16 this is 8 bit this is 8 bit you can also address it uh, individually ax is representing 16 bit accumulator the lower uh, the lower uh, 8 bits is ah higher 8 bits is al sorry it is reverse higher 8 bit is ah lower 8 bits is al so here they are, if you want to access 16 bit accumulator means you have to use d which is ax you have to use next question address latch enable pin I'll remove this. Address latch enable pin in 8051 is used for dash. So uh, out of the ports of 8051, uh, a set of ports or the uh, port that is P0 in 8051 is uh, able to carry both address and data. Now this address latch enables job is to uh, differentiate or to identify whether the port is carrying now address or data. So, address slash enable is actually used for that purpose. Anyway, let us read out the option. A, to access the status flag. B, for demultiplexing address and data. C, used to enable interrupt. No, D, none of this. Correct answer is for demultiplexing from the ports, whether it is carrying address or data. Correct answer is option B is the correct answer. Next question, function of DMA in microprocessor is dash. Okay, I'm going to remove this question first. So, the function of DMA means direct memory access, right? In order to have direct memory access without the intervention of the processor. That is the function of a DMA in general. Here, what is the function of DMA in a microprocessor? They are asking. Options to stack the data in FIFO mode? No. B. Enable main memory access to peripherals. It can be. 
C. Control memory access between microprocessor and RAM. No. DMA is nobody to control the microprocessors for T. Then D. Access of registers. No. The access of registers is always controlled by the processor, not by the DMA. So here it is enabling the main memory access to the peripherals without the intervention of the processor. So if there is a main memory, the peripherals can access it without the intervention of CPU and that is DMA is controlling this CPU has no role in while DMA is operating. So this is this is made possible with the help of DMA that is peripherals can access main memory if DMA uh, DMA operation is going on. Okay, correct answer is option B main enable main memory access to peripherals. Next question which configuration have gain less than unity? So these given below options represent various configurations of the BJT. A common emitter, B common collector, D sorry it is C common base, D none of this. The common collector mode or configuration is a non-inverting mode of operation and it is having gain less than unity. The common collector mode is having the voltage gain, which gain voltage gain less than unity. Okay. The correct answer here is option B is the correct answer, which is common collector is having voltage gain less than unity. And it is also a non-inverting configuration. In, uh, that is the input and the output. So here in common collector means input is given to the base. Output is taken from the emitter. See, it is like this. Emitter output, base is uh, input. The collector is grounded. So this is common collector configuration, right? So here the input given to the base is in phase with the output taken from the emitter. So it is a non-inverting configuration and the gain is less than unity. Okay, correct answer is option B which is common collector. So these are the questions which I have included in this video. As I am saying in all my videos that I am not just reading questions and saying answer. I am trying to include more information along with each question answer. So that if you if some question has been asked from those areas for each question you should be able to answer. So I hope that this video was useful for your preparation. Please do share this video with anybody who is preparing for technical assistant examination that can be of HSFC location, SDSC location, VSSC location or LPSC location. So the admit card of LPSC location is out. The examination is on 23rd of February. Examination is going to happen very, very soon. So I hope that uh, this videos will be useful for your preparation. If yes, please do give it a thumbs up. And also, as I'm saying, please do share these videos. With the maximum of friends who is uh, in general also is uh, interested in watching the topics of electronics. Please do share with those people. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. And also please do tell your friends to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.